Hey guys! So today I am going to be talking to you a little bit about my university, Kansai Gaidai. So this is going to be for those of you who are either interested in what my school is like, or for those of you who are looking at schools to study in Japan. Let's start off with like the size of my school and like what the campus is like. So there are, I believe, 13,000 students at my school, which for me is a huge school. I think it's 13,000. Now I'm questioning that number. I could be wrong. I think it's 13,000, but like, don't hold me to that. My school back at home is only 3,000, so this school is absolutely massive compared to my school back home. There are a ton of Japanese students, and it is a very small campus. You can pretty much walk from one end to the other end in five minutes or less. So between classes, there are tons of students. It is like wading through a river of people. You gotta watch out so you don't run into people. So it's a big population of students, but a very small campus. There are, I believe, like seven buildings or somewhere around there. One of the things I like about all of the buildings is that they're basically all attached with either like overhangs or with over walkways. So if it's raining, you can basically walk over the entire campus and just walk underneath the walkways and you won't get wet. It's amazing. So in terms of the buildings you use when you are a foreign exchange student, the main one is the CIE, which is the Center for International Education. This is probably where most of your classes will be. That's where half of my classes are. So in this building, they have the CIE office where you can ask all of your questions about classes, about clubs, about basically anything. In that building, they also have the lounge where you can hang out. It's mostly foreign exchange students, but a lot of Japanese students also like to go in there. Your mailbox is in this building, so that's where all your important information will go. The other building, which I believe is the only other building, um, foreign exchange students have classes, and that's building 7, where I have two of my classes. This is just one of the um, classroom buildings, nothing special about that. I will have a campus tour up within the next week, hopefully, where I will show you all of the buildings that are relevant to a foreign exchange student's life. In terms of food options on campus, you have a lot of good options. There are three cafeterias. I have only been to one of them, so it's the only one I can attest to, but it is really cheap and really good Japanese food. They have a big plate of curry that you can get for $2.30, and it's really good. They also have a fried chicken bowl that comes with fried chicken on top of rice, and it comes with miso soup, and you get that for, I think, $4, and it's really good. I love that. Other than the three cafeterias, we also have Seattle's Best Coffee, which is a cafe where you can get sandwiches, tons of different types of coffee. Also in the same place as the cafe, we also have McDonald's and they have a cute little station where you can just go and pick up things that you want or you can order stuff. We also have a convenience store on campus which has all your typical convenience store food, tons of drinks, snacks. They also provide um, onigiri and like bento boxes that are made every day. All those things are really moderately priced, so nothing on campus is going to be expensive. You can always eat affordably on campus. But I will warn you that the lunch period, which is from 12.15 to 1.15, is absolutely packed because that is when no one has classes and everyone eats lunch. The cafeteria is completely full. The convenience store has lines to the back of the store. McDonald's has a line out the door. It's just absolutely insane. So I always, oops, I always buy my food beforehand so that I don't have to worry about those lines. So the area outside of campus, it's located just like in town. It's not, Hirakata is not like a super bumpin' city, but we do have a 7-Eleven right outside the front entrance. There are tons and tons of restaurants either on the front, like Main Street, or on the sides, at the very entrance of, I believe it's the East Gate, it's whichever one I walk in. There are two restaurants, there's, I think, an Indian one, and like a cafe type place, but I haven't been in either of them, so I'm not sure what all they have, but I have been told that they are good. So there are tons of restaurants that you can go to, there's one I really like called Sukiya, I've been there like three times, really cheap, really good food. 
Um, school is also about a 25 or 30 minute walk from the bus station, which is also where a mall is that I like to go. There is a lot of stuff in that area that you can go do and hang out. There's also a Starbucks. There are actually two Starbucks right around the bus station. Um, let's see. Hmm. And the school is also about a 25 minute walk from the seminar houses. Oh my goodness. I will also be having a dorm tour. I live in Seminar House 3, so I will go into more detail about the seminar houses in that video. Alright, let's get into classes and teachers. So, um, Kansai Gaidai doesn't offer the biggest variety of classes, but I think they have enough. The classes that I am taking are Japanese Level 1, let's see, Shinto, Koto, and... Japanese cultural history, ancient and medieval. I do believe all of the teachers here are American except for the Japanese language teacher and the Koto teacher. The Koto teacher is Japanese and the class is 100% in Japanese, but that's okay because if you want to take that class and you don't know Japanese, don't worry, I don't know very much Japanese and it's perfectly fine. She just demonstrates what she wants you to do and that's basically all you need to know. You don't really need to understand what she's saying. Okay, so they offer classes like history, religion, business, economics, I think. Um, obviously lots of Japanese classes. They also offer kanji classes where you can learn kanji, kanji? kanji and do readings in Japanese. They also have lots of like cultural classes like pop media. They have like Deaf World Japan, which is about disabilities in Japan. They also have one on death and like monsters and that type of stuff, which I heard is pretty cool. They list all of their classes with all of the syllabi and everything on their website, so you can go look there if you want to know more about what classes they offer. In my experience, I think the classes are pretty easy, at least the ones that I have. The ones that I have are not homework intensive, so the only assignments I have had have been reading responses, like just very little reading responses, and I have to write three essays in total this semester, which is like hardly any compared to what I've had to write in the past. Japanese, obviously you'll have to do work in the workbook for homework and do some studying. Other than that, the only homework is doing readings for your classes every day. Also, from my experience, the teachers are pretty nice. I like all of my teachers. Um, since I'm only taking four classes, I have my Japanese teacher, my Japanese Koto teacher, and then two American teachers. All of them are super nice. My Japanese teacher is the nicest lady and the funniest lady in the world. The teachers are pretty understanding, though. At least the Japanese teachers have pretty strict rules about tests, so you have to take the test on the day that it's scheduled. You can't reschedule a makeup exam. So just be aware of that. Though I will say that I have heard from other people that they do have a lot of homework and the classes are kind of hard. I knew that I was taking fairly easy classes and this is what I wanted to do. I didn't want super work heavy and intense classes because I am here being in Japan to travel and not just to go to school. And I think if that is your purpose, that Kansai Gaidai is a good school for you. Though I will say Kansai Gaidai no longer takes days off for national holidays, which the teachers have complained about just as much as the students. I don't know why they decided not to take national holidays anymore, but that's what they do. So the only day that you get off, at least in the fall semester, is for the school's Halloween festival. So you only get basically one and a half days off for that. And that is the only time you get off. Though the way my schedule worked out, I have Tuesdays off every week, which is absolutely amazing. I would definitely encourage you, if you can work your schedule out, to have one day off in the week because it's fantastic. You can take day trips. It's also just a nice little break in your week. You can get work done, you can be productive, or you can just have a nice lazy day. So the class periods are one hour and 30 minutes, and then there's either a 10 or 15 minute break in between those classes. And there are five periods that start at nine o'clock and go all the way until 6.10. I know that is such a long time and they get out really late. Um, 
the way I made my schedule, I don't have any classes in the very last period because I don't want to be getting out of class that late. It get, It's getting dark now by the time I get out of my class that ends at 4.30. So I definitely would not want to be going home when it's already dark, the sun is already down. That's just not a fun time. So just be aware of that as well. Um, as I mentioned, you do have an hour break for lunch every day from 12.15 to 1.15, so don't worry about not having time to eat. Okay, back to traveling. So, the area of Kansai Gaidai, I think, is perfect for only being here for one semester because Hirakata is perfectly spaced to where it is close to four amazing and big cities. So, if Hirakata is right here, Osaka is below us, Kyoto is above us, Nara is to our right, and Kobe is to our left, and they are all two hours or less away. Kobe is the furthest, which is two hours away. So you can basically travel to all four of those cities on a weekend, and it is the most amazing thing ever. I am so glad I am in this area, because I can do so much traveling, and it is amazing. They are such great cities, tons of cool stuff to do. So it's a really great area to be if you're only going to be here for a short while. I covered everything on my list, but I feel like I still have more to say, and I just can't think of it. If you are interested in studying at Kansai Gaidai and you have any questions, just comment below. I will answer any questions you have, anything you're curious about. I hope this was helpful for some of you guys. If you are going to be studying in Japan at any point, please let me know. I can give you some advice on where you should travel, some things you definitely want to see, or if you have questions on other schools in the area, because I also have friends who are at other schools, so I might be able to answer some of those questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you are looking out for my campus tour and my dorm tour video, which should be up within the next week. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!